Most Singaporeans are familiar with the Gifted Education Program or GEP. What about gifted programs for preschoolers? Now there are a few full day uh, preschool programs for high ability children who do not fit into mainstream schools. Is this really necessary? Do programs like these help the kids or possibly put more pressure on them? Now with us to tell us more is education correspondent Amelia Teng. Hi Amelia. Hi. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Now, Amelia, you know, we've all heard of schools with, uh, gift for gifted kids, sorry. Uh, but the kids are always, you know, usually a bit older. Like, for example, uh, secondary school kids and um, even primary school, like the upper primary levels. Uh, is there really a market for gifted uh, preschools and is this a new concept? Okay. So, um we, we have the GEP program, right? So yep. that's at the primary school level. Yep. Um, but increasingly, there's this niche market for gifted preschoolers, uh, gifted young children. And um, just as how you know, these brighter kids at the old levels would get very customised help through the GEP, um, it seems that you know, there's, there are a few enrichment uh, centres, some education providers who are also um, jumping in at the preschool level mm. to get... Um, uh, gifted kids, la, seemingly gifted kids with IQ of about 120 and above um, to get into these schools. So these, it's not quite at the same level of customised help as the GEP but um, they would come up with like lesson plans, activities that are more tailored to uh, uh, gifted at a gifted level, um, a lot more broader and deeper than what mainstream preschools would cover. Mm. Do you have some examples maybe of, of, of the kind of um, special things that they have in this. Okay, school. so yeah. um, perhaps for, you know, like in Eng teaching English, you would, mm. for a normal kid, you would use phonics, like, you know, like ABC. Yeah. Um, in some of these schools, they may use general knowledge to teach um, the language. So they won't go back to foundational uh, things like ABC because the kids are really beyond that. So they would use lots of like broader things, they use topics that are more uh, relevant outside the uh, classroom, things like even music, or they would try and like you know interweave different topics like Shakespeare or Bach to like <laughs> teach something that is seemingly basic. Mm. Yeah. I mean, how would kids? I mean, okay, all this is you know, it sounds very good in theory, uh, but how would kids actually qualify to be in um, gifted preschool? I mean, considering that they are so young, I mean, they go to preschool at like four or maybe now three. three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even three. Yeah. I mean, is there is is an IQ or placement test even accurate at that kind of age? Yeah, um, I think in the past parents would, were more more or less quite hands off in children's education, but now they are a lot more involved. Mm -hmm. So if they sense that you know the kid seems to be showing signs of giftedness or seems to be a bit like special or ahead of his of his peers, right? Uh, they would typically send the kids for like IQ tests, mm -hmm. um, send them to psychologists to see whether you know, there's anything different and that's how they get the, the IQ uh, results. La. And usually when they approach a, a preschool, they already have the results on hand. Mm. So they're just asking the preschool whether you can take in my, my this gifted child. Mm. Um, so 120 and above is the typical definition of gifted. Um, most of us, our, our IQ is around like 80 or 90 to 110 la, and 100 yeah. is the average. Yeah. Um, but there's this gifted education provider, which was in the story that I wrote earlier, uh, um, which has a screening test for the kids. So mm. uh, you can't it's just like show the yeah you you can't not interview you can't yeah. but you can't show the test. They just they want you to take an extra test to make sure you are really gifted and okay. to see also see where your the profile of interests yeah. or strengths or weaknesses that your child has la, so that they say that they can help you to to customize learning even more, yeah. But um, there's a lot of controversy actually about IQ tests and debate about whether they're really accurate at such mm. a young age. Mm. Um, so as I was doing the story, there were, there were different pools of research. La. Some people think that you know, it, um, IQ is not fixed and you can, it can evolve over time as you get older. Oh, like so improve. Yeah, so there's some hope. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but some people think, yeah, so they think that you know, these people would think that you cannot measure intelligence so young mm. and also IQ tests only measure a very narrow uh, definition of intelligence which is cognitive which is doesn't measure social emotional skills a lot of other things like emotional regulation or mm. that yeah, so yeah I just can't I can't really wrap my my mind over the fact that uh, you know someone so young can 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 take part in an IQ test I mean to me it's yeah. like 
It's really wild. <laughs> I would be scared to do an IQ test if I was four years old or something. So I'm really, yeah. actually, I'm really impressed. Really impressed by these these kids. But I mean, moving forward, you know, what do you think? Um, what what somewhat advice that you think um, um, we can give to parents uh, who have gifted kids or who think their kids are gifted? Um, <laughs> you know, in, I don't mean that in a bad way, yeah. but in a good way. You know, what should they? What should th these parents do? Yeah. Um, so for for parents of gifted kids. Um, it's not all smooth sailing, actually. You know, mm. uh, a lot of people have the misconception that they're all privileged mm -hmm. kids, um, but they also have struggles. A lot of them um, have struggles with social emotional uh, skills, and they don't know how to interact. Uh, the educators all say that they have some sort of lack of so empathy and social awareness. Mm. Um, so. <coughs> There's always that tension, I think, between wanting to give your kids as normal a childhood as possible, um, at the same time trying to stretch them mm, yeah. because you know how capable what they're capable of, right? Um, and one parent I spoke to said his uh, daughter, who's six years old, gets very easily bored at home. So after school, after preschool, if there's nothing to do at home, she's very bored, and so they send her for like lots of classes, um, uh, music painting, art, uh, mixed martial arts, swimming, oh. <laughs> a backers. Yeah, so when oh. I heard, I was like, oh. Um, Just like a holistic, uh, I mean, they wanted her to yeah, develop holistic. Yeah, they, they want her to be too bored. They want her yeah. to be occupied um, and engaged. Um, but at the same time, if she says that she's stressed, they will immediately pull her out. Mm. So they okay. don't want to push her. Yeah. Uh, but I, th I think, so there's a bit of pulling and pushing. Mm. Uh, pulling so you, so to to try and challenge them and uh, engage them, but it's at the same time pushing, um, uh, pulling them back. Sorry, so that you know they also remain grounded at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of just sending your kids for enrichment classes, um, the key I think, as one educator told me, is to keep them engaged, to answer their questions when they are curious about things, uh, to help them develop creativity rather than just drilling them in certain. Like worksheets or enrichment, mm. and to work on the social emotional part, which is mm. can be a problem for some of these gifted kids. I think at the end of the day, um, going off what you said, I think at the end of the day, the key is that is to realize that every child is is different. You know, every child has their own strengths, yeah. their own weaknesses, and I think parents should kind of, like you said, there is a there's always this struggle, I guess, between like um, wanting to stretch them. You know, I mean, yeah, even parents for normal kids. Yeah, even for I mean, even for normal so-called normal <laughs> kids. Uh, and I think it's just very. I think it at the end of the day, it's just you know about playing to their strengths and and thinking you know trying to ex uh, kind of like uh, look at each child differently and yeah, see yeah, every child is different. Yeah. So parents just need to be uh, even among gifted kids. So mm. we have to be flexible in trying to uh, to help our children. Yeah. Oh, thanks, um, uh, thanks, Amelia, once again for coming to our show. I think you really gave us uh, some insights as well as some advice for parents out there uh, with gifted kids. Um, so yeah, to find out more about this story, you can always head down down to our website. It's www.straitstimes.com. Now, those were the top stories of the day. For more news and videos, again, you can head down down to our website, www.straitstimes.com. And once again, I'm Dylan, and join us tomorrow for more stories on the big story. <laughs>